This equation is a little bit trickier than the last one because it involves a polyatomic ion, if you might remember that from our session last week, specifically sulfate or SO4. So just like the last problem, we're going to want to make sure that we have the same amount of elements on the reactant side as we do the product side. So what we do first is we go ahead and count out what we have. So we have one sodium on the reactant side, one chlorine, two hydrogens, and we know this from this subscript right here. We're going to leave sulfate or SO4 as one entity since it's a polyatomic ion. So we're just going ahead and leave that as a one. Then here on the product side, we have two sodiums, one sulfate, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. So now we're going to see if everything matches up between product and reactant side. So on sodium, we have one on the reactants, two on the products. So we're going to go ahead and change that. We're going to put a coefficient in front of the sodium chloride. That's going to distribute to both the sodium and the chloride to give us two. And so now we'll check and see if everything's matching. We have two sodiums on the reactant side, two on the products, two chlorides on the reactant side, one on the products. So we are going to go ahead and change that over here to have our chlorides match up by putting a two in front of it. And that's going to distribute to both entities. So now let's see if everything matches up. Two sodiums on reactants and products, two chlorines on reactants and products, two hydrogens on reactants and products, and one sulfate on reactants and products. And so that is our balanced equation.